Let me introduce the speaker of the day. Welcome, Mr. Arun Venugopalan. He is currently finishing up his PhD in College of Veterinary Medicine, Mississippi State University, USA. Arun has completed his undergraduate degree in Bachelor of Fisheries Science from Kerala University of Fisheries and Ocean Studies, India. He got second rank in the ICRJRF exam, which led to his admission for a master's degree with scholarship. He completed his master's degree in fisheries science with a specialization in aquaculture from Central Institute of Fisheries Education, India. His master's work was on developing a new experimental design in statistics using the hatching process of Artemia as an example, for which he received the best publication award by CIFE. He is a recipient of the Netaji Subhash International Fellowship for the current PhD work in USA. Later on, he also received the Best Abstract Award and a runner-up position for Student Spotlight Presentation in the conference Aquaculture 2019 by the World Aquaculture Society in New Orleans, USA. His current research focuses on fish viruses and computational biology. Today, he is going to share the skills and knowledge developed over the last four years working on his PhD, explaining how scientists decode the genetic makeup of a species, how they sequence the DNA and how they assemble thousands of short rays from the sequencer to reconstruct the entire gene genome. So welcome again, Mr. Arun, and the stage is yours. Uh, thank you, Dr. Deepak George. <clears throat> it's been a while. Uh, I gave a talk because of this corona and other stuff. So, and I think we were supposed to do this before, <laughs> but because of the again corona and one or the other things, uh, uh, we couldn't do it. Anyway, um, so today uh, we'll be talking about the genome analysis, introduction to sequencing and assembly. Now it's corona time. I hope everyone is safe. Um, as you can see, I have put uh, uh, some like the variants picture. So you must be uh, hearing that there is a UK variant. Uh, there is a South African one. We have an Indian variant, which they call, I think, Delta. Then I think new versions. But have you ever uh, a thought uh, how basically how we know this is a variant or this is a virus or how they are changing? So basically, that's what we are going to see, how, how we basically find whether the viruses are changing or humans are changing or anything. So basically, it's about the genetic makeup. I mean, what is the, uh, uh, what is the secret code in every living organism? So we are going uh, to uh, look at how we practically do it. So there are... Uh, basically three components. One is computation side, basically a uh, bit mathematics and other side. Another is the equipment and the technologies we use it. And the third way, the how we actually do it. So basically three components. So I have put, for, uh, put all the three components in my talk. And as I said, this would be an introduction. I know some people may be really advanced in this, but uh, uh, sorry, we'll, we'll uh, keep uh, on basic considering we have a general audience, but anytime during the talk, when uh, you don't get or you need uh, more uh, details, uh, just put it in chat box or you can switch on the mic and ask me. And I try to uh, do some of the things a bit interactive. Uh, and yeah, so that's about our talk. So I think Dr. Deepak George has already told uh, about this. This is me. Did my ma uh, bachelor's in uh, KUFOS, master's in CIFE, and doing a PhD in US. Now my major is virology, and I started as a virologist, then later on started genomics, got interested, then I ended up going to computer science, uh, taking another 20 credits, uh, six, seven courses to get a minor in computer science, basically, uh, our, uh, because, we all do the genome analysis. I mean, we put, we put something into a software and we get something out, but we really don't know what is happening inside. So that's why I ended up taking all those courses to uh, see uh, how the basically this works. Okay. Now, those who uh, follow the news uh, 
this was a big news uh, last two weeks. The Human Genome Project has been completed. So basically the first draft came in 2003, but it completed maybe this year. They say it's almost completed. So it took 20 years. So why? If we have enough money, people, everything, but we, it took 20 years for us to just sequence the human genome. So there are some technical issues and complications there. And I hope I would be able to shed some lights into those uh, issues today and how we are addressing right now. There is no best solution for any of this solution, but we are constantly improving it. So let's see. Uh, okay. So what is genome? So genome is like nothing but complete set of genetic material present in a cell or organ. So I don't, uh, your mic is turned off. Sorry. You have to start from this slide anyway. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. So, so okay. I was talking about the uh, the the complete uh, genetic material present in a cell or organism that's called genome. I mean, it, it's basically the secret of the life or the code. So basically, uh, if, if you look at the human genome, yeah, consider this is Dane Johnson's genome and this is my genome. Uh, so what you see is just four letters. C T G A A. So basically, it's just four letters A T G C, and you can see it's keep on repeating. So you can see the red and green. So between the humans, the genomes are ninety nine point nine nine similar. So rest is just point one percent difference, which accounts for our height, color difference, everything. Whether we get the cancer, we have a disease. Everything is seconded by just 0.1 person. Okay, so now this is a basic thing. Our genome consists of just four letters, which are called nucleotides. I'm just trying to refresh some basics uh, to help our, uh, our talk. So the uh, the name of those bases are adenine. Uh, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. So you don't have to worry about any of this complicated uh, structure. Basically, just remember, we have four nucleotides. They are, their structures are like, they have different structures. So based on the structures, they bind. It's like a lock and key. So basically, adenine always binds with thymine, and cytosine binds with guanine, as you can see, uh, as you can see here. So it's, it's structure, it's chemistry, but that's what always happens. So if we sequence our genome or any genome, it's just the four letters in different combination. So uh, in the genome sequence, we just need to figure out this long sequence. It's as simple as that. Now, so what's the problem? In human genome, we have 3 billion letters. So that means 300 crore. Now, the easiest way is to just read from one end to the other end, right? But the problem is, if you look at the size, a human hair, for example, is 50,000 nanometer. But a DNA is just 2.5 nanometers. So it's a microscopic thing, which has 300 crore letters. So, so far, we do not have a technology which can sequence from the first letter to the last letter continuously. So that's the problem. That's the reason it took 20 years for us to sequence the human genome. Now, now we are going to little bit uh, mathematics or how, 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 we, how, we, how can we approach this problem or how can we sequence the genome. So let's, let's consider this. Uh, this is a classic newspaper problem. So consider you have newspaper bundle and uh, think uh, use a dynamite to just make a 
blast oak, of course. Then what happens? You get so many shredded pieces. And once the blast is over, you got these pieces. Now somebody tells you, okay, tell me what was the what was in the original newspaper. So what you try to do is you uh, pick this, this small piece, uh, keep one here, one here. You try to uh, reassemble back to this original one. That's what exactly uh, we do with the DNA, uh, genome sequencing. This is our DNA, which is basically what I said, three billion base pair. So we cannot do it in a single stretch. What we do is like, we use the technology just cut into small pieces. So it's like the blast. Then what we do is like, just read this. So we have the techniques to read the small reads. So read this, then as we did in the newspaper, just put the pieces together and figure out what was the, or, what was the original reads. So let's see how it can be done. Now, how the, how the theoretical framework works. This is a simple uh, puzzle, which is known as Bridges of Consberg. So it's, it's pretty, pretty simple and it's a 300 year old puzzle. Okay. Now this, this is actually a real thing. This is uh, a city situated in Russia. It has four cities, one, two, three, four cities. And there's a river flowing and they have seven bridges. So the, the, uh, the question is, can we start from one city and visit every other city and return to original city by crossing each bridge exactly once? So very simple. We need to visit all the four cities. We need to use all the bridges, but only once. You can cross one bridge once. So I think you all have done this. It's, it's pretty simple. So this, uh, this is like the four cities. One, two, three, four cities. These are bridges. Can anybody try to solve this? It's pretty simple. Let's see uh, if anybody can uh, uh, solve in, uh, I don't know, at least think. So say we start from one to two using the bridge V. We can come here. Then we can go this way or this way. So basically we just, the problem is we need to visit all the four cities. We need to use all the seven bridges. We cannot use one bridge again. I don't know. So this is a puzzle 300 years old. So this is called Kornsberg. So now some people will be wondering what, what it has to do with the genome or something. Yeah, we will come to that later. So this is a little uh, background. I don't know anybody uh, could solve it or so let's see what happens. Okay. So the problem is actually the Euler solved this problem saying that there is no solution for this. Nobody can solve that original problem. So that is his proof. So Euler basically proved that in 1735. Now, how can we solve this? If you add two more bridges, like seven bridges, now you can do that. So basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we are back in the original position. We used all the bridges just once. This, so this path is called Eulerian cycle because he did it. Now in the genome assembly, Instead of the cities, think as our, the short reads which we produce by cutting the long DNA and consider they are the cities and we just need to find a path because we need to order them. So we just need to find a Eulerian cycle. So that is called genome assembly. It's pretty simple. If you can find a Eulerian cycle, yes, that is your assembled genome. This, that is what is called genome assembly. And if you cannot find, that's when you say like, yeah, I got the reads, I tried several methods, I put in assembly. Yeah, remember the first problem where we had only seven bridges, nobody could solve it. If, and when we added two more bridges, we could solve it. So you will basically put forward some conditions 
whether there will be Eulerian cycle or not. We are not going to that details, that is Euler theorem. But basically, remember, when we try to assemble a genome, we are just trying to find a Eulerian cycle. Basically, it's like the cities and bridges. Instead of cities and bridges, it's just uh, our rates. Okay. Now, we are going to do a practical, simple example how actually we do an assembly. So for that little bit technical terms, I'm not, I, I'll not be using too much technical terms or anything. I'll try to explain that simple. So this is, we said cities. Instead of cities, it's called vertices in the formal language. And the bridges are called edges. Our vertices can be called nodes. So we have just three terms for the, in the, uh, uh, the problem. Vertices, they are cities. Edges, they are bridges. They connect each other. So this is what we are going to use to solve our problem. Now, so consider we did a genome uh, assembly. We sent it to the genome uh, uh, sequencing center. These are the reads. So they cut into small pieces. They read the, uh, our sequences. They send us the, the pieces together. They are called reads. So for our uh, simple example, Consider these are the reads sent by the sequencing sender for us, okay? Now we need to uh, assemble those. So very simple, there is a term prefix and suffix. Now don't worry about the term, terms. Take the first read, it is GTG. Now split, split it, like make it into half. The first one will be GT, the second one is TG. So it's two, right? So this is first and this is second half. They have common, if you separate and read, they have common T. So GT, TG, and combine GTG. Very simple. So take the strain, split into half, the first half and second half. There is a middle letter, which is common. Now, for the genome assembly, we have the reads. Let's do that for all of them. So for example, GTG. So we split it into two, GT, TG. Now, we just need to put an arrow with the direction. So basically it's G, T, G. So G, T, G, right? So put an arrow. Similarly, A, T, G can be split like A, T and T, G, put an arrow. So let's keep on doing that. This is what we get. So we, we do that for all the reads and put an arrow. This is what we get. We will not do all, all of them. So so as you can see, it's basically connected to each other, right? Now, what we need, we need to find the original long string from the small reads. Now we can start at this point. We don't know with what we start. It could be this CGT, or it could be this, or it could be this. Anything, anything is possible. But basically when we do some trial and error, we will figure out that there is only one way or there can be different ways, but usually it's only one way where we can satisfy the Euler theorem, where basically what we said, we need to visit all the cities, use all the bridges, but just once. So if we try the same thing, we need to visit all the cities, use the bridges only once. When we try to do that, this is the only way to do that. We can try different ways, but this is a way to do that. So start from ATG, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we, we are back into the same position. So that's a Eulerian cycle. That's the genome. So just arrange accordingly. So ATG first, then TGG. So we just arranged. Let's arrange the same way here, one below the other. So ATG followed by TGG, followed by GGC. It's just the letters, you just arrange. Now, how to get the genome back? First letter is ATG. Here is your, oh, I'm using the wrong screen. The first letter is ATG, here is your ATG. Now, what is the common between ATG and TGG? It's a G, so add that. Then. TGG and GGC. What is common? G. Add and the G. Now, between GGC and 
GCG, what is common? And the C, add that C. So just add the first one, take the common letters, put it there, keep on doing that. That's your genome. And when we look at, it start with ATG, it ends with ATG. What does it mean? It's a circular genome, maybe a bacteria. So you got a circle and this is your genome. It's as simple as that. Basically we are done. This is, this is what the computer programs does. Now, this is the simplest form. Actual ones are, uh, we didn't uh, take into consideration a lot of assumptions and uh, uh, imagine like our reads are 3 billion reads. We just took like, like three letters, right? So it's a small thing, but mechanism is same. Only thing is in the bigger scheme. So that's pretty much uh, the computational uh, part. So I hope uh, we've got an idea. If anybody has anything real quick to shoot, I mean, uh, an uh, any question, uh, I can take it or we'll move to the next section. Okay. Now, so we learn how to assemble the genome. Now, basic, before that, we need the reads, right? So how to generate it. So now we are going to uh, discuss basically the technologies which we need to generate those small reads. So basically, this started with the, the, the Sanger. He got it. Uh, so he first invented the technology, which is basically called Sanger sequencing in his name, and he got a Nobel Prize for that invention in chemistry, 1980. Now, that is basically Sanger's uh, sequencing is there. There is another one, Maxim Gilbert, I didn't mention it here. They were all initial ones. They are called first generation. Now, we used to use that till 2008 or 2009, and we don't use them anymore. Now, the, then next generation came, technology, which is called Illumina or short read. In the short read, there are other ones like uh, probably, I don't know, you know, iron torrent machine, thermoscientific, some people may have it still, or 454, some of the, but they're extinct. Nobody uses them anymore because of the technology, the new technologies as the new technology. So when we look at the sequencing technology, let me tell you, every five years, something new comes up, the old one gets outdated. It's as simple as that. So, Basically, Illumina sequencing, which is a second generation sequence, which just, uh, that's the only second generation sequencing right now, uh, which we are using. Now the third generation, which is pretty new, Nanopore and PacBio. Now, what are the differences? There are basic chemistries. Uh, there, there is a basic difference in their chemistries uh, that we are gonna see them uh, uh, in the next. Now, let's, let's just refresh our first slide. Very simple, we have four letters. As you can see, they have different structures. Now, this is how your DNA is there. Uh, so, uh, I think we, yeah, I need to mention this to just to make, uh, understand the coming uh, uh, slides. So this is basic DNA replication. Now consider your DNA. So I said 3 billion reads, right? Now your cell is so small. So what the body does in a smart way, consider it as a coil spring, which compressed like this. So that is what is your chromosome. They, they just compress it and keep it. Now, whenever we need to make the new DNA or new cell, what the cell does is just to unwind them. Slowly you unwind. Now you can see the structures. Now, very simple. You want to make the copies, right? So what do you do? just take a scissor and cut in the middle. So that scissor is helicase. Yeah, don't worry about the terms. Just cut the scissor, use the scissor, cut the piece into two half. Now we said we have only four letters and we said adenine always binds with thymine, cytosine with guanine. So what we need to do is we just cut open. Then if it's an adenine on this side, add another thymine so they will bind. So you can see it's keep on adding the new letters based on what is on our template. So 
If it is A here, it will be T here. So it's a basic replication process and DNA polymerase, that's an enzyme basically handles this. So we just need to know what is DNA polymerase. This is how, what is happening in our cell. Now, why I said all these stories is, uh, uh, now basically we figured, figured out each component, I enzymes, how we did it. That's how we invented PCR. So now we can do this in our small 1.5 ml centrifuge tube. We don't need a cell to do it. So we know the function and we made the synthetic compound so that we can do it in our lab. Now, all the initial genome sequencing technologies just use the same thing. Now, let's see how that works. Now, we, we will just mention how the Illumina works. This looks a bit complicated, but it's, it's pretty simple. Now, consider we cut into our DNA into small fragments. So this is a DNA fragment. This is another fragment. Now, this is our flow cell. It is nothing but a glass slide, okay? So it has an adapter or a clip. Now, your DNA fragment has to attach here. So in order to do that, we just attach a clip or we call it as adapters. We just add adapters so that this DNA can bind to this flow cell. Very simple. So add some adapters and do it. Now, then they, what is happening here is, okay, look at this. This is the replication which we just talked about. Now, what we do is like, we give all the components which are required for the replication. Basically, all the enzyme chemicals just make, just makes it, put it there, it will make new copies. Now that keep on continuing it. So this red, this is just one fragment. It made too many copies of this fragment. This is a different fragment. It made too many copies of that, too many copies of the, that one. So now from one fragment, say we made 30 fragments like this. So that is what basically we call coverage. So each DNA fragment, how many times we replicate that is, our coverage. So but there's a common, they, they say we did 30x sequencing, 50x sequencing. What does it mean? One fragment has been replicated 30 times, 50 times or 100 times. It's as simple as that. Now, how we read it, it's again, it's pretty easy. Now, you got the fragment. When you add the new slide, people were really smart. Uh, consider it as like, okay, when you add thiamine, say a red bulb just flashes. If you add the another letter, say a blue bulb flashes. So it keep on doing that. So it's basically fluorescence, but I'm just making it simple. Now, each time it, uh, it flashes, just use a camera, which is a CCD camera and take a picture. That's the picture we are seeing here. So each time it keep on doing it, it keep on coming like this and the computer uh, or the system will keep on taking the picture. Now, finally, once all this, uh, it's comp it, it, once it's just complete, what you do is just read it. Based on the color, we can predict what bases are here. So that's what Illumina does. Now, the problem is, as you can see, there is red, blue, consider like you have two bulbs or three bulbs, four, but consider how 300 different bulbs coming in here, like red, blue, white. Can you differentiate that? No, they, they just combine, then it's just noise. We cannot tell which is red, which is blue. That's the limitation of this technology. That's why we can do an Illumina bit up to 300 letters. I mean, if the read length, our fragment length should be 300. Beyond that, what happens is there is too much light. You take the picture, but from the picture, the computer or, or us, we cannot figure out which light or which color it is because it's become uh, uh, mixed up. And so that's what happens. Now, this is a problem. Now the new technology, the next generation. Now what they did is that like, uh, okay, this appears to be very complicated. Let me make it simple. Instead of now, 
in the Illumina Seekinets, you you saw like 100 reads, they replicated, right? Now you keep on doing it. The problem is we are getting too much light. Now somebody smart said, okay, let's make simple, small, small chambers. So that what is happening in one small chamber doesn't interfere with the other. So it's the same light thing. Only the thing is that they made into small, small compartments so that that interference won't come. So instead of 300, you can go up to 20,000, 50,000. So that, that, so they just modified the, uh, the technology. So this is third generation. Still, what is happening here or here, it's the same thing what is happening in your cell DNA replication. But only thing is they just made a modification. So now this is the hard thing in the field now. Even now, what I said in the Human Genome Project just completed just because of this technology, because we can have the long reach. Now, another technology which is nanopore, somebody be more smart because as you know, all the biological systems, they always make errors. They are never perfect. So, use the polymerase and some all this they make the error so somebody said okay let's do so you remember all the four letters has different structures so the some guys thought okay let's make a small hole let's pull the dna through that then what happens is based on the structural difference adenine or this one it makes a conductor or current difference so you just read the current difference now the advantage of this technology is there is no replication or the error, the, the error caused by the polymerase, nothing is there. It's just the physical, you pass through a mem membrane, you get the current, and based on that, you predict which bases pass through this. Now, this is the new and the cheapest one, and they have different versions. As you can see, this is a pretty small equipment. This is what, for example, you want to go to a swim pond and you want to check virus is there. Yeah, you do it. Uh, uh, you say cube DNA extraction kit, add it. You get the results in an hour or two. So I basically work with this. We have a, a grid ion and we have this too. And it's pretty simple. I sequence all my viruses and we do, we have it in our lab and we do it uh, regularly. So it's, the other thing is it's pretty cheap compared to the pack bay or Illumina, it's pretty cheap, easy, but still there are errors, more errors compared to the pack bay or Illumina. But this is a new technology, it's picking up. And if they are able to fix those errors, believe me, they are gonna put all of the techn technologies behind and they will come up or the pack bio fixes their thing. So this is basically competition between pack bio and nanopore. Now, right now, there is a small edge for the pack bio, but believe me, every week or, uh, or every month, Nanopore is keep on updating their technology and they're improving really fast and they're really smart. So let's see how this goes. Now, so now I have another 15 minutes. So we talked about two things now, how the genome assembled, some bit mathematics. Then now we saw the technologies, Illumina, Packed by your nanopore, how we do it basically, the, the symbol all of you. Now, there is another, another thing in this. This is our theory. Now, how you practically do that? So that's the another thing. So this is something like somebody want to be a bioinformatician or somebody want to be a genomics person. How I, I want to sequence my virus, how to start it, what to do. Now, let's see. In my case, I just uh, took like 30 virus genomes. I, uh, we did the Illumina sequencing as well as nanopore sequencing. So we'll be, I'll be mentioning one section of the thing. Now consider this is my virus, isolate one, two, three, four, like that. So in my case, 30, usually people does 100, 200, 300, or even 500 if it's a uh, 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 prokaryote genome like virus or bacteria because they are small and cheap to do. But yeah, if it is a uh, fish and all, yeah, you do one or two times because it becomes really expensive. Now, when we look at this, the pro, uh, when we get the reads, first thing what we need to do is we need to do a quality check, like how's the reads. So as we said, like in Illumina, after 300, a lot of interference comes, the, the lights are there. So after 300, 
it goes bad. So how we know our rates are good or bad, we use a simple product. There are multiple programs. It's called fast QC, like quality control. So give your reads into that. It will tell you, hey, here is the thing. After 300 reads, the quality is really bad. Okay. So it basically summarizes your uh, 300 billion reads because we cannot do it manually. So that program does it and gives a nice report. Now, once you know, okay, there is a problem uh, after 300 days, what do you do? Okay, let's just cut it. So that's the, this program trimming. So it does based on the quality score, it just remove the bad base pairs, very simple. Now, then they are ready for your genome assembly. There are different assemblers working. What I mentioned is basically that's a deburgin algorithm. Uh, that's one way. And there are Celera, uh, there's a, another uh, algorithm like overlap. Uh, there are different ways to approach that problem. Based on that, different assemblers are there. And we need to find the suitable one, which is suitable one for our data. It's not like, yeah, uh, uh, the, the thing which is good for my channel catfish virus is good for somebody trying to do a, say, carp genome. No. Assemblers have different, uh, what do you say, characters or parameters or optimized. So we need to figure out which is good for us, basically benchmarking. That's what computation biology is like. I mean, uh, we do, we test multiple things and see, okay, okay, this is what it's supposed to do. And it does what it's supposed to do. This is the better one. Anyway, so you got an assembler, then you put into the next package, which is basic annotation. Basically says, hey, these are your genes and this is what, this is what. So it basically does that. Then you do downstream analysis. Usually you go for some fancy phylogenetic tree sometimes or some variant analysis. That this is how exactly what you are, we are doing for Corona. We get the reads, you do this, you assemble it, then you, we can use GATK or something, IQ tree. So you must have seen uh, the, some weird trees uh, about the Corona virus maybe sometimes. So if they are different, they are the variants. So this is basic workflow. Now, what I'm trying to say is like, imagine you have how many, seven or eight programs, you have 300 data set. Try to do that uh, by hand, like taking one output from one, put it into the next one, checking it individually. It's really, really difficult. So how to solve, and there are, oh, okay. So we have a, a, a few minutes to talk about how to approach the things. Now, if you really want to do the bioinformatic analysis, there are some prerequisites. That's what I'm talking about uh, in this slides. Basically, you need to know the Linux. So, you know, basically most of the software doesn't work in your Windows. It works in Linux or Ubuntu or any, any Linux version. There are reasons for that. Anyway, other than that, like then you have uh, some uh, programs like Genius, CLC Genomics. You pay, you buy, right? Then what happens is that now I have explained the, how the genome assembly and those algorithms, those implementations are important or we need to know what we are doing. But when we take the genius or CLC, we just give the reads, we get the output and we really don't know what exactly they do it. And it matters. There are people who ended up in real trouble like, oh yeah, we found some new virus or new bacteria or new gene. Uh, they were using CLC genome. They really didn't know, and when you send it, somebody checked, no, 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 that was an error of the program. So basically, you really don't know, because it's paid one, it's a proprietary software, so they won't really tell you what exactly happened, you know. So usually, we need to use individual programs, and we need to run it in Linux, because they are uh, using, and even for Genius, we can use in general, usually for bacteria, a smaller one. Try to do a salmon genome or a carp genome with a 10 GB or 20 GB data. Yeah, your com uh, computer is going to end up in fire because they cannot handle it. Uh, Windows uh, Genius cannot do it. it. It will keep on crashing because it, there are technical issues for that. That's why we use Linux. Now, a lot of these programs are written in Pro. Python, which is a programming language. What is programming language? Basically, that's how we interact with computer. Like we cannot say computer, hey, do this for me. No, it computer has its own language, like English or Malayalam, whatever. Uh, 
so they are the language. So we can interact with the computer in different ways. So one way is Python. Somebody said it's like a language. Another is R and Linux. So we need to learn all these things. But believe me, I did. Uh, it's difficult, especially when we go to high level language, this is complicated and biology people usually cannot deal with it. So how to solve that, we'll see later. Now, there is another problem. When you try to, so this is me trying to install some nanopore program and what they said, they couldn't do it. Finally, I had to figure it out myself and then I send them this code for them and they say, yeah, glad to hear it. I have already filed an internal pick, so this will be addressed in the next version. So this sometimes, so when you do a bioinformatics analysis, most complicated and most difficult job is to install everything based on the dependencies because it's, imagine it's, it's pretty complicated for a normal biologist and uh, we cannot do it. So problem number two, now problem number three, this is what I was talking about the program. So the code looks like this is a simple code I have written, but when we go to the advanced level, it looks like gibberish and it takes time to learn. Again, as a biologist, you cannot learn. So our problem number three, how to solve it. Now, wh what I did after learning all this programming, I made an automatic complete pipeline for the biology people. They don't have to worry about the installation, programming or anything. I made it everything just like a genius. A genius will have a window flash. This will be just a command line thing. I just made a simple program so that the biology people, uh, people can do this. So yeah, since we are running short of a little bit time, I won't go to the details of how I implemented and I guess uh, I'll, we don't have enough people really uh, understand this. So let's go to this. These are the requirements to install my program. Anyway, but easier way or what for the biologists, let's see how that works. Now, in my case, make a folder, put your raw data. This is your raw data. Then, so I have two datas here. Then what do you do? Just open a command line and uh, type that command and just end up. It's same for everyone. Now, what you can see. Now, rest of the things, my program is done. Program just read your files in the folder. So it says, hey, here's the thing. There is two files in there. Would you like to exclude any files? So you wanna run the further analysis in both or not, right? So we can select, we can select both or we can just select one. So yeah, that's what it is saying. Now, one, yeah, so I'm saying, okay, I don't wanna do two of them. So just enter the number, which one you don't want. So, okay. yeah, so I just entered the one. Then once it's done, you just type done, okay? So it said, we have selected this file row rates for our analysis. Now, in this program, I just said two of them, like two programs, which I mentioned, fast QC and multi QC, just to check the quality. So it is asking which one you wanna run on this program. Select zero for fast QC. Just press enter. Uh, enter done once. Uh, if you wanna do two of them, keep on adding that. Would you like to add any options? So now, if, if you don't do this, it will run as default. So there are, we can change the parameters. You wanna do it or not? That's what it's on. Usually we don't do it. Just enter, you can see it started its job as doing the quality analysis. So you don't need any hard installation, coding or anything. Just select which files you want. Just select what programs you need and press my program does. So that's, this is something I really thought like I should do. I mean, we need for the biologists who cannot follow all this complicated programming and other stuff. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now, 
we are almost towards the end of our uh, uh, talk so we mentioned all the three things now when i say this is my side work now i, I just want to mention what i really do for my phd so basically i'm a virologist so i work with a channel catfish virus basically we look at the susceptibility and we do the genome analysis so we develop two new real time protocols to check the virus latent virus then uh, we got a new virus description new virus blue catfish allo herpes virus that's coming out of my virus so i'm characterizing them uh, so this basically two two of my publication about the, our the new virus uh, which i reported so two publications uh, out of that and the rest of them are uh, on the way now this i really need to mention the slides you have seen and the programs you have seen it all come from here and if you really want to be a bioinformatics or computational biology this is the best book you can have this is kind of a classic and they are on the same course in bio uh, sorry uh, the coursera uh, you can register for free or you can pay for the certificate so this is a companion and this is the person philip compeu and pavel pans pavel they basically write all those speeds these people write those programs and they run an excellent uh, course and the uh, i all the materials especially the computation ball decide initial size they are from uh, these books and these courses and youtube videos and this uh, 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 presentations and they are classic so i would highly suggest if anybody uh, is interested uh, this is the best point to start okay that's uh, i would like to thank my committee members for allow me to pursue virology as well as the computer science we, uh, at the same time they were really patient with me these are all our uh, uh, collaborators and our lab team uh, then these are uh, uh, my grants uh, icr and uh, 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 mississippi state university uh, grants okay now this is another fun thing i keep on doing it this is what uh, channel catfish virus if you put it in cell line this is what happens so i took that in a confocal so you can see the the what is it the normal cells but they combine together to form since you see they making a bridge between the virus is forcing to make the bridges to pass from this cells to the next uh, side so you can see the details again that's my wire all this side i just put it there so i think it's uh, 45 minutes so let's uh, open for uh, the discussions uh, uh, and questions so you can directly yeah. ask or you can thanks. in the box yeah. yeah thanks very much for the uh, delivering the excellent talk and thanks to all who joined today for the talk so before we go to discussion or leave the party please provide us with the feedback about today's talk uh, put the link in the chat box uh please give you uh, your one minute for providing that feedback and also uh, we would also like to announce if any of you are happy to volunteer for afs talks uh please do let us know we are always looking to expand our coordinator network so if you can help us circulate our talks we would like to hear from you uh, just send us an email to afstalks@gmail.com now let's move into the discussion part we have 15 minutes for the discussion please use the hand raise feature if you have a question to the speaker and you'll be given a chance to speak if possible please also type in your question in the chat box so everyone including the speaker can read and understand your question um, so i'll give some minute for people to think and um, uh you know type the questions in the chat box so meanwhile i will ask a couple of questions from my side i don't know if you're happy yeah that is i don't think people they get anything what i say or <laughs> they got it so let's see how it goes yeah we'll see how it goes i i have a little bit back uh, you know understanding so it was easy for me um so uh, my first question is um you know you mentioned about the pack bio and nanopore um so uh, i mean there are two different technologies which i realized really from your talk um, so is there any difference in the read lens uh, they give i mean is one uh, gives a longer one or shorter one and and the second question related is you know uh, 
you were emphasizing on the advantage, you know, giving more uh, weight to the nanopore um, uh, as a new techno technology, but uh, is there any advantage with PacBio at the moment compared to nanopore? Uh, I mean, if someone, you know, looking on the both pros and cons, what, what would you say uh, as an advantage for the PacBio? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me answer that. Now, the pack, so when we said the second generation sequence basically Illumina, their limit is 300 base pair. Now, the third generation basically called long range sequencing technology. So, both pack bio and nanopore gives the long range. Only the difference is the technology, as, as I said, the, techno, the way they do it is different. So, they both give us the long range. Now, Right now, if you ask who has that advantage, yes, PacBio has that advantage because they are pretty, they are accurate compared to the Nano. Nanopore has more errors right now. That's what I say. But the problem with, it's not problem like PacBio is expensive. So it's not cheap. So, but when, when we are trying to do as a reference call, like a good genome like carb genome or any genome, uh, right now, if you ask me what I, uh, I will do, I do the pack bio and use the Illumina sequence. So now the trend is basically hybrid. So use the pack bio to get the long reads. And, uh, but Illumina reads, even though they are 300, they are pretty accurate. So use the, uh, in hybrid, use the nanopore, uh, sorry, the pack bio long read as a template. Then check with the Illumina reads any, any errors are there. So that's what is kind of, the standard right now in the industry. But still, Nanopore, as I said, is really picking up every month or two months, they uh, keep on updating their, uh, the cells and technologies. And the, the, the sooner they reach to the accuracy level, which can be provided by PacBio, they are coming top because the Nanopore is cheap and easy to use. We have it in our lab, we always do it. So it's just a half day work, we can all do it. I do it all the time. So considering that, so ease of use, cheap, and the technology, cool technology, yes. But right now, PacBio has better accuracy, and we need it. So it's a matter of time only. Right now, I would say hybrid assembly worth PacBio and Illumina. Yeah. I think that's yeah, yeah. Your I got it. So my second question is: uh, you mentioned um, about the paid softwares like Genius or something else, yeah. right? So and. Uh, and you said, you know, because we, we don't know what algorithms they use for assembling genome. So, and, and that is, again, the weak side, you don't know what, what they're doing exactly. And mm -hmm. for the reason you recommended of, uh, you know, learning the more computer languages mm -hmm. and doing all these algorithms by yourself. But again, are you contradicting yourself when you created a package for others and saying you don't need to worry about anything else? This is my package. Oh, in, the, in that case, like my package, I didn't made any of those things. What I did is like the user interface. Now, when you look at like, it's fast QZ. So I'm not doing anything to fast QZ. Basically, I'm do, giving the computer the instruction like select this program, start running, use these parameters. That's what my program does. Whatever else is doing, it's a fast QC who are originally written. So if you need to know fast QC or multi QC or space does, it's an original who are the ordered, you can see there, that's exactly what has happened. So I guess so what you mean open. is, so I guess what you mean is uh, you made a pipe pipeline. So, exactly. so to execute and, all the programs in a certain manner um, as what you designed in the programs, isn't it? Yes, but traditional pipeline, usually we have to write all these codes in any language. There is a different language like Nextflow or Snake Make, or you can use the Make programming. We have to write that hard code, you know, and believe me, it gets really complicated after a point. A biology people cannot do it. So that's what I wrote all these programs. So you don't have to write any of the pipeline or program. Genius also does the same thing, but in order to speed optimization and other things, they just modify the 
the assembler or the program a little bit here and there. Sometimes it can mess up the things, but I don't do that. So in my case, it's not a pretty interface like uh, the click and this one. It's just a command line and it's easy and it's speed. Uh, speed wise also, it's uh, that's easy. That's the reason Genius gets slowed or CLC, those things get slowed and when you go to the graphical interface and other stuff. Now, when you think small genome is fun, but Believe me, you need a supercomputer assembled to human genome. Uh, uh, this one, and it takes, it can take hours to do that, even with a supercomputer. So speed is always important. And that's the reason you cannot assemble a human genome or mostly the, the bigger ones in GNRS or CLC, unless you have that much resources and usually they crash. Yeah. So the, and just going to the chat box and the uh, many messages saying, uh, thank you. And it is a good uh, presentation. Um, so the first question there is by Chanakya Naidu, and so where can I learn Python and R programming for genomic studies? Oh, okay. Mm, that's a good question. Mm. Basically, again, uh, first thing, I did it as courses. Now, if you have access to that, that's fine. Uh, or the easier way, there are like Coursera, EDX, there are sites they offer for free. So you need to start like introduction to Python because don't try to learn all the complicated biology things first you can learn. First learn the Python basic, then the biology applications and other stuff. So there are online sites. Now, other thing is YouTube has really good resources. So if you type uh, this one, like this one, uh, YouTube, and there are other sites like Geeks for Geeks or uh, W3 Schools, there are online websites which help us to learn uh, Python and uh, other other programs. Once you get the basic, that's where I suggested the, that program in Coursera Bioinformatics run by the authors. So that's where they specifically teach how to deal with the biology. Data. So get the basics from, uh, I mean, any material is fine, YouTube or anything, then take that course or get that book. Book is really good, a self-explanatory good book. That would be the, the best way to uh, uh, get into this. Yeah. And Chanik, yeah, we are we are uh, running our course if you're interested, and uh, we will be uh, going through the, all the basics of our programming. Uh, if you have no experience, probably uh, that is where you want to start. And um, and once you get your hands dirty with the basic uh, our programming, you can go to packages designed for uh, genomic data handling. So and you would probably also need some. Um, basic understanding on, on, on the genomics or genome data analysis, regardless of whether you know the pro programming or not. So just an addition to what um, uh, Arun's response. Um, next question is by Ajit Kumar. Um, so how did you adopt yourself in data analysis and machine learning? Did you face any challenges? Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was really difficult. So I want to learn all these things. The, then I went, uh, basically, I want to uh, get these courses. I went to the computer science department. Hey, I want to learn. I'm like, okay, here's the thing. We have prerequisites in the case. Uh, I had to take all their undergrad courses. They made me sit with undergrad students, uh, computer science major students, and take those courses. So first uh, introduction to programming, which is Python, then intermediate programming, basically C++ and the programming, then data structures and algorithm. They are undergrad courses. Then I started taking the graduate level, like master's level courses, like database management, artificial uh, intelligence and machine learning, all those courses. So we cannot directly start with machine learning or artificial learning. We need to take all those basics. And if anybody is interested, shoot me an email. I can uh, uh, give you the prerequisites because you need uh, the basic knowledge to understand uh, those uh, things. So that's how I did it. So I took a, a, around 20 credits course, almost equivalent to my PhD course work. Uh, it took two years for me to pick up, but depending on what you need, how much depth you want to go, you just want to analyze it. You don't have to worry about too much on the programming side, but you really want to make uh, write some pipelines and other bioinformatics side. Yeah, that's when you need those things. So, uh, so I guess that answers that question. Yeah, the next one is by Kavita. Uh, she wanted to know what about the Galaxy software, mm -hmm. whether the pipeline you developed is only for QC? Yeah, 
here is the thing. So Galaxy is also uh, this one. And if it's a small database, it's easy to use. You can use it and people are using it. The problem is when we have a two big, big data and when we need to really assemble the complicated things, they have some limitations. That's the only reason. Otherwise, as I say, if you are a beginner, you want to really explore the data and try to learn how these things, I would say Galaxy is a good point. You don't want to start the hard way. So this will be easier way and it will keep motivated. So Galaxy is good, but there are some limitations you'll feel when you really want to do some advanced analysis. That's why the people goes for the coding and other stuff. And the next question she asked about, is it only for QC? Here's the thing. This, this is my side work. And uh, I just tested for two things. Now I'll be adding the assemblers like spurts and the other stuff. I got the code. I didn't add it to that. I, I have it. So basically I'm trying to do uh, different quality softwares uh, and the assemblers and annotation. And sometimes soon I'll get a Publish as I said, I have a lot of work on the other side, that's why it's getting a bit late. But uh, uh, I'll be adding other packages so that you just give the raw rates, then you should get a assembled a genome. That that is my target with that package. So I'll be adding other programs before it comes out. So it, we are still uh, adding those programs one by one and testing them. Um. The next question by just now, I think it's a question. It looks like a comment. The pipeline you used is useful for annotation. I think it's a question. Just now, do you want to come in and speak? Uh, the last question, I think it's about 10x genomics and pack uh, So no, pack bio. Wait, Arun, I asked a question before that yeah. um, by just now. Uh, uh, just now, can you, would you like to come in? I think she is asking uh, the pipeline you made, is it useful for annotation? I think that's what she's asking. Yeah, that's what I said. Like I can keep on, I'm keep on adding the programs, annotation programs, assembly programs, and other programs. So I'll be adding one by one. So before I publish, uh, I would say like, it will be there. Yeah. The Next question by Lakshman Sahu. What's the difference between Illumina 10x genomics and PacBio sequencing platforms? Yeah, basically 10x is basically what they do is for single cell uh, uh, sequencing, like basically for the transcriptomic analysis where the what is happening exactly in one cell, you know, like in one cell, what exactly, what are the messages going in and the so, so, uh, so in our case, if you want to do the DNA, we take a piece and we just mix it. So what are the results we are getting is a combination from say hundred cells or thousand cells, but 10 X basically uses for single cell genomics and basically for transcriptomics. And you can do the same thing with the pac too. Uh, same thing. Uh, you can uh, use it for uh, transcriptomics and other stuff. But the thing is 10 X is really new and people just started using it. And uh, uh, even in my case, I probably I would wait some more time because it's, you know, uh, it's a new company. It's really came out really recently. Uh, so people are still benchmarking and trying the protocols and other stuff. So if you are really a starter, no, that's not the, uh, the place to start. I'll still stick with the back bio because it is kind of established. And we, because even for 10x, sometimes when we look for these packages, they may not be combat. Because, so it's kind of, I would say, actively developing and it's getting tested. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the answer for that. Yeah, Kavita has come back with more questions. Whether we can use Nanopore for transcriptomics and whether mm -hmm. your pipeline can be used for transcriptomics data. Mm -hmm. So this uh, nanopore, yeah, people use it for transcriptomics, methylation, genomes. I just said one application. So basically, almost all the applications, see, very simple. It's just four letters, A, T, G, C, anything which can read. So whether it is transcriptomics or uh, uh, genomics or anything, as long as A, T, G, C is there, that strand is there the technology can read, whether it's nanopore or pack bio. It's as simple as that's the basic answer for that. As long as it's DNA and uh, the RNA also, they, we can do it. As long as the sequences are there, we can use the both technology or the Illumina, any technology. So I think that answers that question. 
Now, again, I'm getting uh, the one more question she asked uh, whether your pipeline can be used for transcriptomics data too. So again, not to clarify, I'm doing this as a modular pipeline. The basic functions will remain like checking whether uh, data is there, how to do it, all those things. Then I'm doing it in a such a way that I can keep on adding it. Probably I'll not be mis mixing the genomics and transcriptomics. I'll be first going for the genomics, like all those things, because applications are different. And uh, write another one for transcriptomics. So, and believe me, if someone else really need it, they don't have to wait till it's case public because getting published, we need to do a lot, lot of validation and testing. But if really somebody needs a testing, I, I can really help you shoot me an email. Uh, we can set it up for them or we can run it for them. I have the resources too. So I can even run it for them and help them. So any help uh, I, I can do in that line. Yeah, that, that's all the question uh, in the chat box. But yeah, if anyone else want to ask. Uh, Sir, yeah, Kavita, sir, yeah. So I just wanted to confirm, Minister Nanopole, okay, the error rate is more. So whether it will be suitable and how much? Because we are having one nanopore sequencer here recently purchased and uh, we wanted to use it now. So I'm confused whether I should go for um, metagenomics or uh, transcriptomics. This, which will be more suitable. It depends on, on what the Metagenomics basically says that if you have an assemblage of microorganisms like bacteria, virus, and everything, you give to metagenomics, it says, hey, this virus is there, uh, this bacteria is there, this, this, this parasite. Or, so basically, it does that. Transcriptome is basically about the RNA, like how the messenger RNA, like from the DNA, how the message is passed. So it's about RNA, basically gene expression. Very simple. It's gene expression. Metagenomics, basically, we use it to classify, uh, like we got, a, so we, we can use it, like say we have pond water, we need to know uh, pathogenic virus is there or bacteria. Yeah, take, take the water, it's complicated than what I say, but still, as an example, take the water, do the metagenomics, that will tell, okay, it has uh, uh, like ESC uh, the, uh, or aeromonas or this one, or it has channel catfish virus. So that's what metagenomics does. And we use nanopore. I use it for my research, so we can all use, people are using it. There will be a little bit error rate issue, but the new technologies has really came down good. So only thing is we have to be a bit careful. And sometimes uh, we do the nanopore, and if you really feel uh, there are some errors, we just do a minimal Illumina just to fix those errors. So I would say so minimal things, uh, I mean, usual things, we can use nanopore without any problem, but we have to be just aware that there could be some uh, errors. And when we do the analysis or when we make the interpretation or making claim before claim, making claims, we need to be careful. And those who do the bioinformatics, they know it and they know which one is real and which is not real. So that's the only thing there, but nanopore is good and cheap. And if it is for a uh, transcriptomics, we can really use it and it, it's easy to use. What it means, what it means minimal and illumina? Minimally you normal, know, as I said, like, see, these people charge just based on the, uh, the depth. As I said, 30x, 50x, like one fragment, how many times they do it. So uh, if, you know, if we have a really good uh, nanopore thing, Illumina, we don't need a, a, a 70x or 80x. We just need a 30x or 20x just to fill. So 20x means 20 times sequencing. So that much less cost. 80x means 80 times sequencing more cost. So if you are doing uh, like um, Illumina just to correct the errors in Nanopore or even PathBio, we don't need that much data. So we need little less because we have already a framework from the other one. So it will be a bit less cheaper. So that's how they charge it. That's why I said it's, it's, uh, it's a cost thing. Okay, uh, one more uh, question. So what is the basic like Python language, like Python, then R, and then anything else which uh, we need to start means for a beginner? Okay, for As doing this. if you want to start learning, I would say first start learning Linux. I mean, Linux, okay. command lines, like, see, if uh, you might have seen in my presentation, it's just a black screen. So there is no way you can use the mouse pointer and click and do no. You, you want to move a file, you have to type a command for this. So everything is coming. So you first thing would be to get used to those command line in the Linux. Then 
if you don't learn the real python programming or r programming you still can do all this analysis believe me there are a lot of people who doesn't know it's perfectly fine uh you once you learn the linux basic command line and do this and little bit here and there uh then it's fine but as i said if you want to write your own programs and you really want to get into the depth of how this algorithm goes you want to do it, that's when you need to start using uh python or uh, or r because basically uh, the normal people doesn't write any program because it's all somebody written there you just use it for using it it's fine so basic r i think uh, dr deepak george is teaching so that that is enough you you have to bit adapt for the biological data that's it uh, python online courses are there so it's it's okay so if you really want to do as a beginner i would say start with the linux command line and other stuff and believe me you can there are free online platforms to learn that they will give the free linux environment you don't have to install it in your computer or anything there are online resources for that you can learn from there and then go from there thank you so much anyone else have a question uh, you can see kishore your mic is on uh, do you have a question or it's just uh, it's on yeah if any anyone would like to ask question please unmute yourself and you can ask also take your time to provide a feedback for us uh put up i put the link in the chat box and the uh, upcoming our course flyer is also in the chat box if you would like to see it anyone else with a question so i think that's that's probably it um uh so but you know if you have, if you need to ask anything you can contact arun arun can you put your email address in the chat box for everyone yeah i'm just doing that so kishore have a question uh, can you suggest some publications for what i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Uh, regarding uh, the pro pro programming yes. in computational biology yeah so uh, here is the thing uh, i can uh, give based on i mean different people has different requirements so any publications or books or resources just shoot me an email uh, i'm just adding my email then uh, i will uh, will uh, i'll ask what exactly you need and based on that i can give you the resource i mean i can help you to find the resources and uh, both the papers or books and uh, uh, for the practicing there are online website allows for free practicing and other stuff so i can uh, uh, i can uh, help uh, with that so i just uh, uh oh sorry oh i need to okay yeah i think my email id uh, is there so just shoot me an email uh then i will uh help you guys based on what exactly uh, each one uh, needs so i don't see email is i don't vv9090 at gmail.com i don't vv90 at gmail.com so i guess that's that's everything and um, thanks once again for arun uh, for giving his time i uh, still have a few months away to complete his uh, phd and uh, submit his thesis uh, so i guess he will be in a very busy schedule and uh, uh, thanks for giving some time for us and uh, i have spoken to arun about uh, conducting a course for air force dogs uh, on on genomic analysis and uh, or whatever he mentioned here so he will be designing a course so if he, if anyone is interested you know just watch our space um I guess probably after his phd submission we will be uh, running this course um yeah so that's that's everything from us today and uh,